Hello, this is Lawrence Lewis. And this is Sister Christian. Today is Saturday, March 21st, 2020. We are two producers on opposite coasts who set out to make a lighthearted podcast about what it means to be a good producer. But we decided to pivot, and now we're reaching out to our filmmaking and live event community to listen how the epidemic has affected you, your work, and how you're coping. We need to hear your stories. So please send us your questions. Tell us what is happening with you, your work, your, your personal life, whatever you feel like sharing. You can send us an email at producershappyhour at gmail.com or record a one-minute voice memo and email it to that same address, producershappyhour at gmail.com. Just follow the instructions on our website, producershappyhour.com. Oh, and Lawrence, we now are, we officially have an editor. Um, we yes. need to give him a shout out. Absolutely. Uh, who jumped, he jumped in to help us. His name is Robert Bloomkey, goes by Rob. He is a non-union sound guy in New York. He does production sound, like traditional, like content or, um, you know, interview style or commercial, uh, but also does live event sound mixing as well. Yes, yes. He worked with so, us on uh, the Xfinity project, right? Game of Thrones? Yes. Is yes. that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, Billions. Yeah. He was with the BTS crew. Yep. Got so it. big shout out to him. Thank you so much, Rob, for yes. jumping in. Thank this, you. This means um, Lawrence isn't <laughs> spending <laughs> so much time every day us recording and then um, editing too. Yeah. I think yeah. it would take me twice as long. So and, thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Rob. And uh, hats off to all the people that do a daily podcast because, boy, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And Christian, to a point that you said earlier, we're reaching out to our filmmaking community. We're also reaching out to our live event community. That's also an important sector. As I said, I think in a previous episode, we've kind of merged with a lot, at least I have, and I know you have a little bit as well, merged with a lot of live event industry people because of all the experiential advertising that we've been doing. Yes, and they get work just like we get work, you know, exactly. freelance. So uh, they should be included in everything that we discuss. So we want to hear their stories as well. They're welcome to send them in uh, because we're all brothers and sisters in this crazy thing that's happening. You know what? We should probably talk about our schedule. Yes. Uh, so it's a little loosey-goosey, guys. We're trying to put these out at a regular time, but it's a little tricky because, you know, we're still two kind of <laughs> displaced people trying to figure out uh, our lives in this new reality. So we try to record... Every morning-ish, late morning Pacific time, and then it takes a good five or six hours to edit. Now Rob's taking on that task, so we try to get them out around six o'clock Pacific time. You know what? It, it might be later. Last night's to come out until 10 o'clock. Apologies. Tonight's, we're not, it's 3.30, so who knows how late it might come out tonight. We want them to be topical. We want them to come out at regular time, but, you know, we're just doing our best making it work in the midst of all this uncertainty. So bear with us. Exactly. Because, well, even um, yesterday, right, uh, 30 minutes after we recorded and started to edit, some different news had come out. Yeah. So yeah. It's, everything's changing so rapidly. We felt like, hey, let's try to do this every day. Exactly. So we're going to do our best. We appreciate you guys listening. Um, and uh, Yeah. I feel like I, with listening back, I feel like I was screaming through that whole episode because I was trying to talk like pushing through the emotions. <laughs> So I'm going to try and, like, soften my tone a little bit, have a little bit more of a podcast. <laughs> we can take some deep breaths. Well, deep breaths. We can take some deep I don't, breaths, I don't need too. to scream. <laughs> but well, you weren't, but, I mean, I can understand how it might sound yeah. or it might feel that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Christian, how are you feeling today? Well, uh, today I am feeling uh, pretty down. Mm. And I'm going to say that it's been now a rep Petted, it's only been a week, yeah. right? So, uh, but even saying it's only been a week kind of disqualifies yeah. <laughs> what it actually has been yeah. because it 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 feels like it's been a year yeah. <clears throat> since last weekend, and but also the input has felt like a year's worth of input in a week as well. So time is passing so slowly, but the input is still coming in so rapidly that the two aren't mixing up mm -hmm. in a way that I'm feeling like, like, I'm almost nervous that if I stop watching the news or turn it off, yeah. that something major is going to happen and I'm going to miss it. Yeah. 
And that feeling is just okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it, 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 it begins to you begin to lose a little bit of um, rational, uh, ration rationale. Yes. And let's say in your in your brain. So yeah. So today I thought I would um, you know get back to some projects, open projects that I had going on that are not at all related to production. Oh, good. Some creative things because even though my brain works in the budget mathematical way, I all, it also works in the creative way too. So, getting back and working with my hands has been really good. Yeah. Um, Do you want to say what you're doing? Sure. Uh, I have fourteen thousand projects. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so everyone, you have two. Like, you have two more than category. I. You have two more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a really good friend, Christian, who his father once at his wedding said, "Whatever Christian picked up, he mastered." Right, and then he would just drop it and move on. Which, uh, yeah, it, it's it's a huge trait of yeah. his and his brilliance. Right, so. I seem to pick up everything that I can do and then just do it about 90% and then mm. just want to finish it off later. So that's what I'm kind of excited about right now is finish, seeing how many can be finished, even if it's just one. Christian, we I are. I think it'll be a victory. <laughs> we're very, we're very similar. It turned, <laughs> mm. But I, we knew that. Yeah, I have yeah. a lot of projects I get excited about, get them going. And yeah, maybe it's like a. I'll finish this later. <laughs> yeah. Now's the like, time. I know I can do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, because once I've mastered it, you know, completing it means the same repetitive thing until you're done. Yeah. So, yeah. I also am in the middle of repairing my washing machine. So okay. I ordered a part from England. <laughs> yeah, I ordered a part from England that is coming Royal Post, but it's taking longer than it usually does. So we'll see how that goes. Well, good luck. And then probably some spring cleaning. How about you? What are you doing? Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, you know, also still uh, quite a bit sad and scared at, at the current state of affairs and what is down the road in our future. I chatted with a friend who they will remain totally anonymous, but uh, this person was on a big AICP call with a bunch of production companies all around the country and it's uh, it's it wasn't a very positive call. A lot of layoffs, a lot of salary reductions. Mm. People are still bidding jobs, apparently. But uh, oh, really? Yeah, but is I, that for um, like two months from now? Or no, I'm not sure when. I don't have the details, but I think it's just for, it's just ad agencies trying to show their clients that they're trying to figure something out to stay active and stay on the books. Oh. And uh, that, yeah, you know, this is all hearsay. I've been those jobs before. <laughs> yeah, this is all hearsay. So you know, no, of course, not going to say anything about anybody. But uh, it 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 wasn't great. So that chatting with that friend yesterday was was a little disheartening. So trying to have it's a nice, bright, beautiful, sunny day here in Joshua Tree. We're about to play bocce mm -hmm. ball in our backyard. <gasps> so things are looking up, <laughs> at least in that yes. front. Yeah. Oh, but this and this uh, this is a news thing that I have to tell you. We tried to go to the national park, which yesterday I said national parks are open and you're encouraged to go out and walk yes. around. Apparently, as of yesterday, national parks are closed. Joshua Tree National Park is closed and the the person that we drove up to we were going to go in and drive around and the person and have a hike the person there said no as of yesterday all the national parks are closed and there was a stream of campers and people streaming out i mean that type of information just yeah yeah it it, it feels like it's being filtered through so much that you're just not going to hear it and we're not sure why. I mean, maybe right. th they mm -hmm. can't staff them. Maybe they're concerned about people being too close. I mean, it's a national park. It's acres, right? Thousands it's of acres. <laughs> but the campsites they're are pretty big out there. <laughs> but the campsites are right next to each other. And since they can't monitor people staying separate from each other, I don't know. I don't right. know. But that was a little disheartening today. So that's an update. And Christian, I think, I don't know if this happened today or last night, but apparently New York City airports closed down. They closed down today. Um, I'm not, I've been following the story. It's my understanding they're going to open back up. Have you heard something different since? No, nope. all I heard was that they closed. So I don't know that, how long or what. I know. And I, uh, I, I was thinking to myself after flying on Tuesday, like who's still flying? 
That's yeah. what I, I mean. Not that it's any of my business. Obviously. No, 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 no judgment. But <laughs> but yeah. I know no judgment. I'm just wondering who is out there still like needing to get somewhere or didn't go home. Yes. When again, yeah. no judgment. But I pushed it for too long. I should have probably left a yeah. good five days before I did. Yeah. So, and my original flight was for today to come home. Oh, good. <laughs> so I just couldn't imagine no. like doing it. No. Like staying for that long. Hey, Christian, one, before we get into the voice memos, we've got some great voice memos mm-hmm. to share today, and we appreciate everyone sharing their stories with us. It's, it, it, it makes us feel so much more connected to everybody out there. Before we get into that, and I, this maybe we were going to call this t- the title of this episode TBD because we didn't have a title for it, <laughs> but maybe maybe <laughs> I, ha- I, I did have an idea of something I want to chat about. It's called The Bottom Line because we're producers, right, and we look at – Right. The bottom line, not just financially. That's one part of it. But the bottom li- line of like, what does this all mean? How do we get to to, you know, the end result of what we're all trying to get to? But taking the financial side of it, I figured this is a good time for us all uh, to really sit down and take a good look at our finances as scary as that might be. Oh, <laughs> this is a conversation <sighs> I've been having too. So if you want to talk about this, let's fucking tackle it. Okay. Well, I just mean, let's just touch the tip of the iceberg. Okay. All, I, all I'm going to suggest for now is mm-hmm. you go through your credit card bill and look at what subscriptions you're carrying. Yes. Because we all have a, a bunch, like we're subscription to death. We have to subscribe to everything now, apparently until the day we die, right? I have to pay rent on a cell phone until the day I die. So, but that's a necessity. I don't need both a Spotify and a Pandora subscription right now. In fact, I don't need either. I'm canceling both. Right. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I'm not. Oh, I, wow. Yeah. I'm canceling my gym membership. I canceled my meal delivery service. I'm going to cancel one of my streaming services and just go down to one. Wow. I, I think it's time. This is a great time to do it because, you know, we have no foreseeable work. I don't want to be an alarmist, but for at least a couple months, right? We absolutely don't. This not, again, this is how I feel when people are like, we should be positive or we should be, mm. you know, I'm just, it's being honest. Okay. Well, then I'll, I feel like, I'll, I'm going to be, yeah. I'm going to be more honest. I don't think okay. we have work for the next six to eight months and possibly a year. Mm-hmm. Film shoots. I don't see. And of course, guys, we're talking about the kind of work me and Christian do that, you know, national commercials. So our crews are, you know, 100 people. So those shoots are probably not going to come back for a while. I don't right. want to say this to be alarmist. I just want to be pragmatic and say, hey cancel that Pandora subscription <laughs> unless it's something that really as uh, I, I forget her name gives you joy if it really gives you joy and you need it to survive this by all means keep it who says that? hold on who says that I don't know go on <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not Oprah right <laughs> no 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 it's, she's on Netflix okay. <laughs> she's got a show about you know uh, get rid like, cleaning out your closets and tidying up your life oh oh we should know this those shows mm, those shows um, those shows <laughs> Hit too close to home. Marie Kondo. Marie Kondo. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it gives you joy. So just take a look at your subscriptions. Do you have uh, some extra things? Like, are you paying for, you know, Christian, you and I were going to sign up for Mondays.com. We talked about it in an episode uh, that we didn't mm-hmm. air yet. A productivity <laughs> app. What? Like 10, right. bu- 10 bucks a month. No big deal. I don't need that right now. Mm-hmm. So let's, uh, I you know. know. Let's look at the bottom line, all you producers mm-hmm. out there, and also all your film, all the film crew people out there, and just maybe start closing some things down that we don't need. Well, okay, how about this? So why don't I um, make a pact with everybody out there, too, that I will realistically look at mine, uh-huh. because I, <laughs> I have, I it's everything. Yeah. And I think that um, Sasha and I have doubled up on a couple of things, too. So. Yeah. Why don't I make a pack to go through and then I'll really tell you guys a monthly amount of my subscriptions and we'll I'll go through and figure out which ones I need that may actually go away, let's say, yeah. in a month or two as well. <laughs> what I think I need now and then we can check it in again and in a month. Okay, I don't need this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
That's like so, that's yeah, good. I, that's I'll a, do that work. Okay, yeah. great. I'm gonna do it too. That'll yeah. be a fun activity. Let's check in uh, in the next. Couple so, episodes. Much <laughs> so much fun. So much fun. Budgeting for myself. But oh no, no I know. For other people, yes. Doctor, heal thyself. <laughs> I can't budget for myself for beans. So this is a good challenge. I know. And yes, I do know it does take money away from corporations that are paying people salaries. But. Uh, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, we all got to look out for uh, ourselves right now, I think, right? Exactly. And I think that the reset that you were talking about in Friday or yesterday's yeah. episode, that uh, this could be, again, the reset. Mm-hmm. The needing to, okay, well, let's see what we need versus what we want. Exactly. Which was a big thing that my mother tried to instill in us uh, for a lot was, you know, do you need it to survive? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which sounds dramatic, but we were pretty poor. Okay. So, <laughs> Well, I think that's yeah. the title of the episode, Need Versus Want. I think that's perfect. Oh, Or perfect. do we say Subscription Done. Challenge? Oh, Subscription Challenge. I like that okay, one better. Okay, great. You guys are hearing it live. <laughs> Not live, but <laughs> live to tape. Subscription. Live to you. <laughs> <laughs> live to you. Subscription <laughs> Challenge. We love it. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Christian. A shout out to Alexa and her ba- and her <laughs> bathtub right now. <laughs> um, Christian, we have a few voice memos to listen to, uh, so let's start with a, a very dear friend of both y- yours and mine, Susan Linz. She's a production designer based in New York City that we have both had the good fortune to work with, and she has a very kind and thoughtful message for us all. Hi, production friends and family. It's Susan Lynn's production designer. I wanted to take a moment to talk about how I'm coping during the self-quarantine period and how I'm feeling. I am trying to stay in complete faith and positive during this time by keeping myself busy with being creative, getting inspired, focusing on things that I don't have the chance to focus on when I'm working so much. I'm reaching out to friends and family, being there for my own family, which I'm taking care of. I'm helping others that, you know, maybe cannot leave the house, dropping off food for people and so on. And it's truly, truly humbling, this whole experience for me personally. I have complete faith that, you know, this too shall pass. And I feel in a way that it's going to make me a better person and a stronger person and definitely pay attention to the things that I'm I'm maybe not pay attention to when I'm so busy working. So I hope you're all well and stay strong. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Susan, I mean, yes, Susan, I mean, yeah, I, it's so heartwarming and um, just, it nails down what I would like to try to do. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. Again, going back to what my... my Aspire to. Yeah. Going back to what mm-hmm. I, I said this yesterday, I might, I might say it every day, so forgive me, but... It's like the world hit the pause button and uh, is forcing us all to slow down, stop polluting, stop consuming, and focus on what it means to be human. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a tough one. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's slow. It's it's like a slow wave washing over. Yeah, and yeah. Well, in some senses, it feels like a, you know, uh, I think if it all hit at once, then anxiety, I, I understand it would be a lot of panic out there. I understand. Yeah. I also feel like this is a slow band aid happening. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It is. I know. Not trying to be, um, no. you know, dark or pessimistic. I'm just saying that, yes, I want, I would like to try to aspire to what Susan says. I, I, me as well. Me as well. Mm-hmm. So thank you, Susan, for that lovely message. That was very heartfelt, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Susan. Okay, this next clip is from Luke Hale. He's a video producer, works at a company, not going to name. Um, he brings us his story. Let's take a listen. Hey, Lawrence and Christian. This is Luke. I'm a producer in San Francisco. I really love what you're doing with the Producers Happy Hour. 
We canceled our first shoot over a month ago when it was apparent that travelers from China wouldn't be able to attend a conference that we were creating media to support. I didn't understand when we were canceling that shoot that it was really just the first domino that was going to fall. Everything has fallen apart. I did our last shoot a week and a half ago. On set, it was very apparent by talking to all of the crew that this was everyone's last job. It's certainly a scary time in the industry. Things are very different. I've never experienced anything like this before. I do another podcast video production daily, and we've made that the focus of our last few episodes also. Just what can people do with this time when they are at home? And the truth is it can be really difficult to know what to do with those hours. It's not an industry where people traditionally work from home. Anyway, thanks so much for the podcast. Appreciate all the work that you're doing. Thank you, Luke. Uh, it was very nice. Uh, I'll, I'll say it again, but you can see Luke's podcast and his tips on how to use this time. On his podcast, uh, Video Production Daily, it's on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, all the usual platforms. And we're going to put a link to his podcast in our show notes. So Luke's um, voice memo took me back to like uh, a week and a half ago, let's say Wednesday yeah. of not um, this past week, but the week before. That was when we started to see the the posts happening and people's jobs canceling left and right. Mm -hmm. Because that was when I think New Rochelle happened in New York. What's that? What do you mean? Uh, New Rochelle um, was is a town um, upstate a bit in Westchester uh -huh. County, and that's when the governor sent the National Guard in to assist uh. with a one and a half mile uh, quarantine area. Uh, so it made like major headlines. So that was the kind of the beginning of the the clients starting to say, "Okay, oh wow, maybe Christian, we can't I, film." May, I, I didn't hear about it. Uh, maybe I. Mm. Maybe I was I was buried in work, but uh, somehow I missed all that. I, I that that's news to me. I never I didn't hear that happen. Yeah. So um, you know, I I also spoke to my family. Um, I'm not going to go too deep because a lot of it was uh, you know personal. But I can say I spoke to my family, and they have friends who have been like out of touch for a week, just hanging out in the mountains oh. somewhere without. And so people are starting to really come in and be like. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, what has happened? <laughs> I know, just like the Big Brother house, I think it uh -huh. happened on too. Plus, a lot of smaller communities in the the central part of the states are not. You know, they're just getting some national news where it's taken. You know, it takes up ten minutes of the first part of the hour, and then after that, it's all local. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that we have a second wave of things about to happen. I don't know what they are, but I think, you know, once the entire country understands the severity yeah. of this. Yeah. Yeah. And Luke. Uh, this opinion. Yeah. And Luke, I was right there with you. I went through the kind of kind of the same thing. I just, you know, mm -hmm. one job kind of postponed due to scheduling. I'm doing air quotes. And then another. Actually, they all kind of post. <laughs> I had three jobs. They all kind of postponed due to scheduling air quotes. And it, I was like, oh, I, I bet they're in my, you know, one and a half week ago naivete. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, they're probably scared of the Corona thing. And they're probably just going to schedule to, you know, mm -hmm. to, to April. And then that's when. Exactly. Well, yeah, because the initial talk was two weeks. Yeah. With everybody. Exactly. Just push it for two weeks. Let's reevaluate. Yeah. Uh, just so you guys know, um, Lawrence and I do this um, over the internet mm -hmm. video conference so we can see each other. Yeah. So he was definitely doing um, air quotes <laughs> whenever he said air quotes. Proof. Just so you know. <laughs> Proof. Yeah. Okay, our next one is from Brian Santiago, who is a founder, creative producer at Looker Lab in New York City. Let's listen. Hi, my name is Brian Santiago, and I am in the East Village in New York City. I am the creative producer for a company called Looker Lab. Um, we were uh, about to start shooting our first short film when a few days before one of the actors uh, was quarantined. So that uh, made us have to postpone the entire production, hopefully till late spring, early summer. Uh, it was a short film titled Grafton. We were very excited about it. However, it will happen. It'll just be at a later date. Some of my other business is suffering, but... I'm trying to, and I would advise everyone to just try to keep it in the day, um, stay positive, and get really creative. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Brian. That's that's. I think that's exactly our message. Message is to stay positive, stay active, keep talking, share your stories, 
and try and be creative as much as you can. It's about all we I can like do that. right now. Keep it, keep it, keep it in the day. Keep it in the day. I like that. Yeah, that's good. Keep it yeah, in the day. It's good because it makes. Uh, yeah, um, sometimes I will think about what needs to happen so far in advance that um, mm. it prevents me from doing the things that should happen today. Yeah, exactly. So I like that. Keep it in the day. Thank you, Brian. Uh, and as usual, we'll put uh, contact information for all these folks in our show notes um, in case uh, you want to connect with them. So as I mentioned uh, at the top of yesterday's podcast, late in the day just before we pushed it out, um, Netflix had put together – I saw the article that Netflix had put together – a $100 million fund to help out-of-work film and TV uh, film crew. So the thing that's missing from the article is any sort of call to action. So I don't know how anybody, you know, gets mm -hmm. in line for this. So I'm assuming some information will come out soon. If we find it, we'll share it. But here's what the article mm -hmm. said. Um, and this is the Netflix chief content officer, Ted Sarandos. He said, the COVID-19 crisis is devastating for many industries, including the creative community. Almost all television and film production has now ceased globally leaving hundreds of thousands of crew and cast without jobs. These include, yeah, these include electricians, carpenters, and drivers, many of whom are paid hourly wages and work on a project-to-project -project basis. This refers, Christian, to the, the, freelancer, the freelancers' union. Uh, we're going to talk mm -hmm. about that again. Their, their letter to all government mm -hmm. officials is that we have these project-to-project -project odd jobs in a way, and we need right. to be f included in these social benefits. Sarandos goes on to say, this community has supported Netflix through the good times, and we want to help them through these hard times, especially while governments are still figuring out what economic support they will provide. The article also stated that Netflix is also committing $1 million to a pre-existing emergency fund, including the SAG-AFTRA COVID-19 Disaster Release Fund, the Motion Picture and Television Fund, and the Actors Fund Emergency Assistance in the United States. And... A $1 million donation is being given to the AFC and the Foundation des Artistes. So those are all great things that uh, one big corporation is doing. Hopefully, they'll more, more follow follows suit. through, and, and hopefully that is <laughs> something that is, is accessible to all. It sounds like it's only for film and TV, so I don't know if that applies to commercials, and it doesn't sound like it applies to mm -hmm. live event people. But, um, mm -hmm. but, you know, these are the... It's, a, it's start. a start, and these are the people that hold, a, you know, a lot of cash, and it's great to see them mm -hmm. at least trying to do something. Exactly. I do. Um, it would only be in their benefit mm -hmm. <laughs> to make sure that people have money, which, again, means they will be keeping the subscription service. Yeah. There, yeah. There's a, it's a win-win. No, it's symbiotic for absolutely sure. Yeah. They should help out because they should. It is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. None of us are working. But then also, too, there's no money going into the economy at all unless people have money to spend. Yeah. So it's absolutely a win-win situation for Netflix. Definitely. Okay, one more thing I want to mention, Christian, is, and I think I'm going to do this every time, uh, is that suggest people take some action by signing the petitions that are going around on social okay. media. And we talked about this two episodes ago. There's a proposal for federal funding for displaced film crew. And that is on uh, actionnetwork.org. It's a simple petition. Just sign your name to it. That's all that need, you need to do. It's urging our government leaders to make sure film crew is taken care of. And there's also, uh, so we're going to put that link in the show notes, uh, but you can find it on act actionnetwork.org. Uh, right. Also, there is a petition to ask the government for federal aid package for the live events industry. That one's on change.org. And I'm going to put that link in the show notes as well, um, because all these people are were the first ones to get hit. Um, I have a small experiential company called Indelible Arts, and I have a roster of these artists that do live events. And they were mm -hmm. all telling me, like, mm -hmm, maybe two weeks, three weeks ago, they're like, dude, everything's canceling. And that was all before right. the film stuff started canceling. So mm -hmm. they were hit hardest and they were hit first. And it's going to be a while before they're back to work. So please sign up on these petitions uh, if you have a moment. Yes. We're, uh, as we say, that we're all in this together, which we are. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 
So, yes, I also wanted to remind everyone that the Freelancers Union has written a pro forma letter that you can send to your state officials to implore them to include freelance workers in their relief packages. We'll include this link on the show notes as well. Yes. We'll put it all there. If you have a moment, please, it's it's just a little bit of work for everybody to do uh, to hopefully make some good out of what's happening. Yes. Now. Yes. We're going to move on to a segment because Lawrence loves I segments. I love segments. Um, he does love segments that things to do. So I thought I would say a few things here that, that are newsworthy, but also like maybe um, we can get into something together. Okay. So that's it. Uh, so Hello World is closing its stores in New York City. Wait, remind me what Hello, uh, Hello World Communications. What is that? Remind me. Hello. Well, Hello World Communications. Did you ever work with Ron Yoshida? He was a sound guy, a commercial sound guy from a while mm. ago. Early 2000s, I would call it. Ron was fantastic. And he um, he's had a company named or has a company named Hello World Communications that also supplied walkie talkies. Um, oh, right. Camera yeah, yeah, equipment, yeah. A, a little bit of lighting and that uh-huh. kind of stuff. So got an email today uh, from his mailer list that said that they are closing their doors after 20 years. Mm. It's quite sad for sure, but I also understand the thinking behind yeah. it. So um, they're having what they're calling a closeout sale. They Everything right now, their entire inventory, including furniture, is discounted at a minimum of 30%. Wow. So if I know, it, I know it's a time for buckling down don't get me wrong but they also have a lot of the newer um, camera and lighting gear out there and if you were looking to ever purchase a camera you know might be a time wow don't know it'll help you both out wow that is am- that's um, amazing yeah I, it's very sad it's sad but it's also um but also sharing the news because it could be somebody's it could be beneficial, could be beneficial to, somebody. to somebody yeah Yeah. Now, another thing would be, um, Lawrence and I have been chatting about, we've reached out to probably a a lot of the major production companies, Mm -hmm. um, the big guys out there who um, are hesitant to come on to discuss our current situations, which I can understand everybody's still formulating their plan, but uh, would love to see if you guys would like to tell us live what you're going through. Yeah. Anybody. Uh, I mean, we'd love to talk to you. Anyone we'll put you on. who's worked on a film shoot or a live event before from a PA to a cinematographer who, you know, owner, operator, whoever's out there, we want to hear your mm-hmm. stories. We've got a few people Directors. lined up for next week and we'd love to hear more. Mm-hmm. It, it seems like uh, yeah. what I did is I went down the ad age top what I forget what they call it, you know, top 10 production company list. And I mean, I know them all, but, mm-hmm. you know, I just went down the list, emailed them all to see if anybody would chat with us. And so far, nothing, which we can understand. It's a tricky time and everyone wants to be correct about what they put out in the world. Um, but um, but also to the human moment that we've been discussing with Lawrence makes me feel like, um, you know, maybe now's the time to let us in and not be so guarded. Yeah, that would be nice. But no judgment. No judgment. <laughs> no judgment, but... Um, Touch of judgment. Yeah. <laughs> no, we've also reached out to the heads of um, several unions. Mm-hmm. Um, we've not been taken up on that offer yet either, but we're going to keep on trying because it would be good to know what uh, the local or IOTC's plan is for the next, you know, six months. Yeah. We'd love to hear that. We would love if to they hear had that. A, if they had, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we'd love to hear it, and what they're doing for their members, so we could pass it along to you guys. Absolutely. Yeah, and then lastly, yes. Okay, your crazy idea, Lawrence. Oh boy. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would try to do a stop animation project. I love it. And I know. So maybe I don't. Maybe I'm getting in over my head, but maybe like a minute long script or something. So I'm. If if you guys want to email us your short story ideas, there's a chance that I uh, that I might make it into a stop motion 
extravaganza. Oh my gosh. I know. <laughs> talk about <laughs> talk about an offer. <laughs> wow. Take, so you or, I know. write a script, write a little short one minute story, give it to Christian. Yeah. And you're gonna do yep. a little stop animation with Interpret it. Interpret it. Well, I'll I'll contribute. <laughs> If there's a male voice that's needed, I can give a male voiceover. I know some friends out there that are other voiceover oh, nice. people. Maybe I can find someone who will be willing to contribute a female voiceover. Christian, you can do it as well. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, I'd love I'd love to get more people involved yeah. because I thought what I would do is film it or take the photos against a green screen. And I know I have a friend who's offered to sketch in all the you know various backgrounds that we could just drop in if i do it on green screen that's amazing i know i (laughs) I know so it could be a fun group project if you guys are interested that sounds amazing yes so that's what i got for to do's (laughs) excellent (laughs) for to do's i've got a my friend tyler stubbs shout out to tyler um he he showed me a an app he shared with me an app called house party app maybe i'm late to the game on this but it's a little, it's a little simple little. <laughs> all the kids have been doing it for all the kids have been doing it. It's a little f- like uh, FaceTiming app, but once you go into online, your it texts your friends, it shows your friends that you're in a room, and people can join the room, and you can just have a little group mm-hmm. chat. You can lock a room if you don't want people to know you're there, so you can have it just you know two or three people or whoever you want, and then you can play <laughs> games. Games show nice. up on the screen like trivia games and and all kinds of stuff. So it's just something fun and helps Ooh. pass the time and it helps you connect, which is what we're doing here. Connect to people, connect to friends, connect to family, and just have a little levity. Yeah, I mean that sounds like a great idea. It kind of sounds a little bit like AOL AOL chat rooms back in the oh day. Oh my god! I mean, <laughs> I was never anyone... one. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was only ever in <laughs> anytime I was on the computer. It was all AOL chat rooms. <laughs> oh, <laughs> anyway, man. I'm kidding. Anyway, uh, I think all right. uh, that does it for the day. Yeah, everybody stay safe and stay connected out there and stay active. Yes, wash your hands and for the love of God, do not touch your face. I'm getting Don't better. Don't do it. Don't do it. Good. I've been watching you and you have. I'm watching on the video uh, chat and you're. Well, you're I didn't cry good. today, so that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I might have a little. Um, right, but that's be, face touching. <laughs> that's true. Be sure to send us your voice recordings or your emails, whatever you want to say. Whatever, if you want to be on the show, let us know. If you want us to say something about you on the show, let us know or send us the voice recording. Producers happy hour at gmail.com. Lawrence, how do people reach you directly? You can reach me at lawrencetlewis.com or voiceoflawrence.com for my voiceover work. Christian, how do people get a hold of you? They can reach me at sisterchristianproduces.com. Yes. Yes. All right. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll we talk to you tomorrow. We'll probably be on. We'll probably talk to you tomorrow. Because oh, wait. Actually, is, Christian, oh, do you want ahead. to take a break? Should we take a break tomorrow and come back Monday? We can take a break and come back Monday. There will be um, maybe yeah. uh, piles and piles of voicemails. I hope so. Uh, to go we have an interview. <laughs> we have an interview Monday, so let's. Yes. We're gonna everyone. We're off tomorrow. We're gonna take some personal time, and then uh, we'll come back on Monday. Perfect. All Thank right. you. Thanks all. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.